Hey everybody, this is Bradley of Bradley Teaches and welcome to Bradley Teaches Overlays for Restream Studio. So thank you all for coming out today and we're gonna get started momentarily. So to make sure everyone is here. I know we have Restream going out to multiple places and today we're even including Twitter. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Please let me know that you're here. Let me know where you're coming in from. And if you have questions as usual, drop them into the chat stream with a Q or the word question in front of it. And again, I am Bradley Vincent of Bradley Teaches, also known as Alana's Pawpaw, and we're gonna jump right in today. Now, it is 4.30 where I am. This could be whatever 30, wherever you are. <laughs> so welcome back. And as usual, like I told you guys last week, I'm gonna always answer questions that come in through the form first. And let me show you the link to the form. You can go here to get um, to go to the form and fill it in to submit your questions early. So I'm going to jump in right now, answer the first three questions that came in, and we're going to go ahead and get this thing started. So if you're here, let me know that you're here. I see you guys are watching. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let me know where you're watching me from, and let's just get to it. So the first question that came in early is from Mr. Antonio Mathis, so Mr. Antonio, and he was asking a question about creating a graphic overlay for uh, video, right? So what he was actually asking about was more so a social video layout uh, instead of something that goes into Restream. I can definitely show you how to do that, although that doesn't necessarily fit in doing graphics for Restream. If you want to repurpose your Restream video and use it other places, I can see where you would want to do this. So first, let me show you what he was talking about. Turn on my overlay here. So he was talking about this kind of social graphic. So the rectangular or square graphic with the video on it. So the first thing I want to say is the video has to be shot or cropped in a vertical format to get this look, right? Um, you can also, if you do the overlay, you can place a window where that video could go. But I'm gonna show you how to do this in Canva real quick right now. And it's basically a square or vertical layout. So let's jump into Canva right now. And I will show you how to do that real quick. So what we're gonna do, let's just go to uh, social media. I guess I could have went to Instagram post too. Now what is cool is that I'm actually using the desktop version of Canva right now, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm not using the web-based version because I prefer to use this one, especially from all the stuff that's going on, uh, desktop version. But anyway, so here we go. We're gonna go to Instagram story kind of format, which is a tall rectangular graphic. And at this point, all you really have to do is bring in your video, then create your background graphics for it. I'm gonna do something real quick here. Uh, let me pull in a screen that looks like a video. So in this case, it's gonna be a rectangular screen instead of the vertical screen. So this is my video, right? And this would play, I can export this out of Canva as a real video. So kind of ignore that it's a still image right now, I'm just doing that to cut back on some of the time. But now all you really have to do is add your graphics that you want to use Right. And then you add your animations and different things like that, add your text to it. And when you export this, you can export it as a movie file because you imported a movie to it. So whatever kind of animations you may have or whatever, you can export that as a MP4 file, I believe, is the options here. Because it's only a graphic right now, I think it's the MP4 version, you can do it that way. Import that into Instagram or whatever your social media application is and your video will play in that wrapper. Now, if my video, because I'm going to crop this image. Now, if my video was actually shot in a vertical format, right, it could easily be used that way. So if this was a vertical video, I could still do it that way, right? 
So this is more like the layout that you have for your thing. You basically just want to set up the graphic shape in a square or a um, vertical rectangle instead of the typical horizontal. Put your video in it, then you're good to go. So that's essentially how you need to do that. But once you put a video in it, you can export as a video out of Canva. So it's uh, actually not that hard. The next question came in from Mr. Jose Zapata, and he was asking how to display lyrics from Bible scriptures for his Sunday school worship services in Restream as an overlay. Now, let me go here real quick because I can just open up another browser for that. I'm going to go to Bible Gateway to just grab some scripture. This could actually work with any text. So the thing about it, um, all right, so just grab that text, which is the first, the verse of the day. All right, so I'm going to go back to Canva because we're doing all these in Canva just because it's cross-platform and can be used easily this way, right? So I'm going to go here, go to a new design. I'm going to do a custom size. Right. So here we are. Now, in Canva, if you have the pro version, you can export with transparent backgrounds. If you don't have the pro version, something um, you may want to do is actually put your text in a bar, but then delete a piece of it. And I can show you how to do that real quick also. But there's multiple ways to kind of do a lower third kind of bar, right? So I'm gonna go to text, add a heading, and I'm gonna paste in the text I just had, right? Now, so essentially, so say for instance, you had multiple scriptures or multiple song lyrics, you would make copies of the slide and paste in your text on multiple slides. So you can either uh, export as an animation to go through them or just have multiple graphics. So there's multiple ways you can do this, right? So we can just do raw text this time. So I'll put the text here, make the top bold, make it bigger. Uh, the bottom is fine. And let's take the extra space out of here. So say that is your scripture text, song lyrics, whatever you want, right? And we can see how that's actually going to look in the video if we use our secret weapon graphic. Remember that, right? So we can see basically here how that's gonna fit. So we know where it's gonna be on the screen. We can put a bar behind it. So if I go here to elements and go to basic shapes, Right, position it backwards. And you can do different things with it. You can put a picture in it if you use a frame, all kinds of stuff like that. I'll go back here, undo that, release it. So now if I have the pro version, I can just export this as a PNG, and that'd probably be better than white versus black. What I can do now is just export this as a PNG because I have the pro version. So I go to download PNG, transparent background, and I'll download that. So if I had multiple slides, I can export multiple graphics and then turn those on individually. Yes, turn those on individually in Restream as different layers. I could, um, and I'd always have the template that I made in Canva to remake them later, right? Because now I know I want the book in, in, in verse bold, certain size. I won't want the text certain size. So I could just copy this slide now, right? And put all of them in and save them as separate graphics, have them as separate overlays. So now if I go here to my downloads folder,
All right, and I'm in Restream now. Let's go to Graphics, Add Overlay, and Desktop. Okay, go back to my main screen, turn that on, and now I have the scripture verse, right? So that's because I have the pro version. If I didn't have the pro version, I would export this as a JPEG file, then reopen it in something like PhotoP or some other kind of application, right? I usually use PhotoP because it's web-based. Select the area I don't want, delete it, and then save that as a PNG file. So this is a possibility whether you have the pro version or the basic version. So it'll work either way. So hopefully that answers your question, uh, Mr. Jose Zapata, and uh, hopefully you're good to go. Now, Mr. Emmanuel asked me about Restream. He wants to use a dynamic scoreboard overlay from another application um, that he's used before. And he mentioned, uh, Swish Hive and something like that, right? And so he's talking about a dynamic graphic that actually pulls content um, from another place to show it in the graphic. Unfortunately, right now, you can't use widgets natively in Restream. Now, if you're coming into Restream with a virtual camera from another app, that may be a possibility if that app can use widgets. He mentioned OBS and a few other things, Wirecast, and those things will use widgets. You're going to have to be able to use a web widget for that to work. So unfortunately, uh, that won't be able to work, but you can easily create the scoreboard graphic and things like that. You just won't have to, you won't be able to dynamically put in the score uh, remotely from another application. So actually that's something that um, is not available right now with Restream, but if we stream, um, does start using web widgets. It could use that program that you spoke of. It could also use a program like Singular Live or even something from Streamlabs that may have dynamic numbers in it. So those are options, but just not available right now. Um, let me go through the chat list real quick and see if you guys have anything that you're coming up with right now. Uh, Okay, let's see. How you doing, Dan? Okay, so here's a question. Um, okay, they're talking about some game show designs that I did for some other things, right? Now, I'm also guessing that you're going to be using a virtual camera to bring these into Restream. So with that, you can attach a sound effect to when different portions of the game show plays or if you exported it as a WebM file, you can attach sound to that as an overlay. WebMs can have sound versus regular um, video overlays or transparencies cannot have sound. So if you did it as a WebM file, but you're gonna have to bring it into Restream Studio with a virtual camera, um, or you can add it as a sound effect that plays when the movie starts. So you can attach it to different things. So that's probably the best way to do that. Um, okay, Antonio, cool. Glad I ask you, uh, answered your question. Um, if you have any more, please let me know. What's up, Chris? Good to see you, man. Um, oh, cool. That's what I'm here for. Appreciate that, appreciate that. And so today, we're going to do a few more things in Canva, some generic things that may be able to help you to create um, some lower thirds or some, or even because here in its, in its basic sense, an overlay is anything that sits on top of your video. So that does mean lower thirds. It does mean sidebars. It means upper thirds. It means bugs. It means logos. But usually when you hear someone say overlay, they're thinking about or talking about a frame overlay, right? And we did kind of talk about a few of those last week. And I wanted to uh, show you a couple of things that I'm working on, 
that you could do that would fit for restream layouts, right? So if you have a guest or you have uh, two guests, right? Are you trying to do different types of presentations when you have multiple people on screen? I was going to work on a couple of overlays that would fit uh, those layouts. So if you all are interested in that, uh, we can jump into that real quick too. Cool, uh, cool. Thank you for coming. Hey, from Indiana. Um, cool. Yes, definitely watch the replay. Appreciate that. Thank you for the kind words. Appreciate that, Justine. Uh, let's see. Yeah, you can you can use green backgrounds with your slides. If you're going to be using, well, okay, let me say it this way. If you're going to be using something like an NDI or something that can take the green screen out because you're keying it, green screen is fine, right? If you're going to be using, I kind of have it this way. If you, why use another application to do something extra that's going to use more bandwidth, so to speak, for your computer to use? So if you're going to be using static graphics and you're going to put green on it anyway, might as well put gray on it. And the reason I say gray is because like last week, if you're going to select that color and delete it and there's some remnants of the color, it'll be more of a shadow type of look than having little green pixels everywhere, right? And so if you're gonna have a green screen, you might as well legitimately make it a transparent background. So all you have to do is open up that same graphic, click on the color you don't want in Photo P or even Preview if you're on a Mac, but I use Photo P usually. Select that color, delete it to get true transparency and just resave it as a PNG versus going through that extra, um, hardware push to take out the green screen. Uh, so yeah, but it is definitely an option. Um, yeah, like, like I was just saying, yeah, you chroma key out the green. Um, hello from London. Cool, cool, cool. All right, y'all. So let's do this real quick. Let's just jump into Canva and make a few overlays. But what I wanted to show you is some additional layouts that I was working on for Restream, just in case you're not like me, a talking head on screen by yourself, right? You're actually, you actually do interviews or you actually do a screen share, or you may have multiple people on the screen with you. So let's go back into Canva and I'm gonna go to my home screen. And I'm gonna grab this file here, which is my Restream layouts that I was working on, just kind of playing with, right? And as you see here at the bottom of the screen, those of you that you know, know, the, know the Restream interface, these are basically the layouts of the windows that you have in Restream, right? So this is the typical two window wide screen layout. Um, because I was working with the guys from Restream and they sent me some things to work on, so that was real cool. Thank you all for that. Um, but these are the windows of different layouts in Restream. And as you see here, you have the white background and things like that, right? So say for instance, I'm gonna do the two window wide screen, which a great thing you may wanna do is to invite your guests on screen early or open up Restream in another window then invite yourself so you can have two of you that goes on screen together. Get both the pictures of you on screen, then do a screen capture, right? To get that double window look. Then when you bring that into something like Canva, you can trace out those windows to know where people are sitting, right? And I've already done that before, so I'm not gonna kind of go through that process now. But what I did actually is I have all the windows designed in and I lock them. So I drew both of the rectangles and I locked them so they can't be moved by accident, right? So now if I go to the background window, I can pick a color and it just pops behind those windows. I could pick a graphic. Now this is me using the background function, right? I can do this with anything. So if I go even go to elements and I'm gonna go to, let's just say paint brushes say paint, see what I get. Okay. So I go to paint and I can now create a kind of a look 
by paint splotch, then I just push it back behind the window. Uh, I can do another paint splotch here and make it bigger and push it behind the windows, right? Then I can even go back here to the background and make it a color instead, right? So you can kind of do different, different layouts like that. And because Canva cannot cut holes out of images, right? Even in the pro version. So what I'm doing, I'm doing now is I'm anticipating having to have to open this up in another application to cut out the windows. So, but because my window designs are locked, I can do whatever I want to behind it, knowing that these two gray boxes are part of my restream layout and I will be deleting these later. So I can do all kinds of stuff that I want to do back there, right? Just kind of, wow, that's kind of wild. So say, okay, I did this kind of wild looking design. Um, I have a paint spot here. So let's knock that down a little bit. And so it's kind of a wild design that I did, right? So I know this is going to be a restream layout for me. And I know I'm going to have to delete these windows out of it. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to go to download. And I'm going to download a JPEG. And I'll just do page one. Download JPEG, 100% quality, original size, page one. And I'll put this in my downloads folder also, because now it's not asking me now, because I'm actually using the desktop version of Restream, like I told you. This is not the web-based version. So I'm going to go over here and open up a web browser now. Where are we going? There we go. And I'm going to open up Photo P. Okay. And I'm going to drag that over here so you all can see it. So I'm using the free version of Photo P. That's why you see the ads over here, right? But now I'm going to go to my downloads folder, grab the overlay I just made, and drag it into Photo P. So here is my overlay. So all I'm going to do now is go here and select the gray and delete it, right? And now when I export this file, export as PNG, original size is fine. I'm going to save it. So now I can open this up in Restream and use it as a two window overlay. So let me knock that out and go back to Restream. So what I'm going to do here now is actually grab that graphic and pull it in as an overlay. And I'm here by myself, but I really wanted to show you what the overlay would look like, right? So now this is a two window overlay, standard window overlay for Restream. It is that simple, right? So when you start doing your layouts, as long as you know where the windows are going to be and you lock those window shapes, you can now put whatever you want behind it, knowing that you're going to go in and delete the window graphics later. Now, what uh, Brother Flores was saying earlier about using the, um, the green screen, right? So if I was in Canva, I wanted to do those in a bright green color, the green screen chroma key color. You can also do that and then bring it in through, th through uh, third party software and key that out. So you can do it multiple ways. But if you're going to already save it as a graphic, like I was saying, you might as well go through the extra step of opening it up in something like Photo P and just deleting what you want to be transparent. So that's how I would do it. So I just wanted to uh, give you guys that option. Um, hey, 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 got the London here. Cool, cool, cool. Don't know what you mean by such a great idea, but hopefully it was. <laughs> I'm guessing it might have been the secret weapon image or even doing the windows, but I appreciate that. Uh, oh, wow. He's saying good morning from Manila. OK. Thank you for waking up and hanging out with us today. I guess you're ahead of us. I don't think you're behind us. You must be ahead of us. 
Um, can you share screen while another app is playing music in the background? Um, okay. Can I share a screen? Well, it depends on what your audio input is, right? So I don't think you can have multiple audio inputs into Restream. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think the video should have audio in it. No, you said a screen share. You would have to be able to share your desktop audio for that to happen. Otherwise, if it was audibly coming out of a speaker, your microphone that you have as your input would probably catch it. Uh, the sound wouldn't be as good because it's kind of a, you know, you're getting it from a distance from a speaker because your speakers are not sitting on top of your microphone like you would be, right? Um, so yeah, so the audio input would have to be selected for for your desktop to play something off your off your desktop and through a screen share with the audio. Um, yes, secret weapon graphics. Yeah, I mean, it's it's worth its weight in gold and people really don't use it as much as they could because like right now, I'm on screen right now and if I did a screen capture of me here, I could bring that into Canva and use it to help me lay out my graphics because then I can bring it back in without a lot of back and forth, a lot of troubleshooting, because I know where that graphic's gonna fit because I use my secret weapon graphic screen screen capture to create it. And so why, why create extra work for yourself? Um, all right, let's see. Cool, cool. What's up, Coach Frenchie? Good to see you, man. One of my regulars, I guess I call it that. What's up, man? Good to see you. Um, yeah, I mean, the program that I'm using right now, this is this is Canva, web-based uh, application. You can, there's a lot of free features in it, and I'm using it as if it was free, everything I'm showing you today. Uh, there's a free version, a pro version. The major difference is, as far as we're concerned, is being able to export a PNG file with a transparent background. But as I've already showed you, through a couple of additional workflow steps, you can create that transparency with a third-party application like Photo P. Now, a couple of other things that you won't be able to do, free versus paid version, you won't be able to make multiple folders of different images to help you make your designs. You won't be able to have multiple color palettes and some of the graphics and some of the backgrounds are only available in pro version. So you'd have to pay for those to see them. But to do everything I'm showing you now in Canva, I have shown you so far, can be done with the free version. Now, sometimes I jump back and forth just for expediency and I'll use the, the pro feature of exporting as a PNG so that's what I have to keep walking through that process of click, delete the color, and resave. Yes, but that can be done with the free version also. Uh, let's see what we have here. Well, yeah, planning. Now, for that, you, you really want to have multiple audio inputs, right? And if you had multiple audio inputs, you could have your microphone as an input, have your desktop audio as an input, or even in my case right now, I'm using a Rodecaster. And I won't be able to hear it, but because I'm using my Rodecaster as the sound, I can play this sound. Now I'm not monitoring it, so I can't hear it. And that's, that was probably really loud because I realized it was turned up. But I, I'm not monitoring that right now, so I couldn't hear it. But my Rodecaster, I can have, you know, sound effects. I can have other things plugged into it. So, yeah, if you had a mixer that you would then plug in an audio source or your iPad or your iPhone with music on it, you can play that along with your microphone 
and both of them are single source from that mixer. So that's a way to do it, right? You need more hardware for that. You probably need some more bandwidth to sustain that. Yeah, but that's a way to do it versus having uh, multiple audio inputs. One audio input with multiple things plugged into it is also an option. Um, yeah, good to be seen. It's always good to be seen. Yeah, my my pre-recorded YouTube uh, videos are on a little bit of a delay now because I'm doing so many lives. Yeah, but YouTube is my home. And uh, I appreciate that. I'm, I'll have some new tutorials coming out actually really soon. So I appreciate you hanging out there and, and uh, dropping in from YouTube. Uh, all right, y'all. If you have any more questions, let me know. And I can jump back into Canva and do a couple of other things. So just let me know what you're thinking right now. Stuff you might be interested in seeing. Oh, and there was something. Well, hmm. Should I show y'all that? Because today I was really wanting to talk about overlays and things. Um, you know what? Let's do a. Um, yeah, I mean, you can do graphics in Photoshop, right? I use Photoshop. I use I use the Adobe products. I've been using the Adobe products nearly 30 years. Right. I was using Photoshop before it even had an undo or even had layers. I've been using Photoshop that long. I just don't train or do tutorials on it because it's kind of a higher end product. Real deep learning curve can be. And so I want to use products that people can easily use to create pro level graphics. And that's why I lean into Canva and Keynote and, and graphics applications in that range where people can, don't have the high learning curve and they can jump in, do something cool and professional. And also the keynote is free, Canva's free, right? So Photo P is free. So I just wanna uh, help empower people to create graphics with you know, some of the easier to use applications. Um, hey, 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 good to see you. You're coming through as Facebook user. I know that that's kind of a thing that tends to happen sometimes, but yeah, thank you. Um, Right. And that's the thing, um, because I could jump into Illustrator right now and draw all this stuff. Right. I could open up Photoshop right now and just make this stuff. But everybody doesn't have access to Photoshop. Everybody doesn't have access to Illustrator because they really are made for professionals. I'm not saying that you all are not professionals, but people that do graphics all the time or people that do graphics for a living. Uh, that's typically the audience that has Photoshop Illustrator. Final Cut Pro, things like that, right? But I want to have put this thing so it's accessible to more people. Uh, yeah, I mean, Keynote is kind of for designers too, but Keynote is free, right? Um, and I can do a lot of things in Keynote that look like Final Cut Pro or show you animations of things that work with that, right? So there's things you can do in these other programs to get a real professional look without the learning curve or the price tag of other applications. So that's just kind of my niche, my lane, and I, I choose to show people how to do that stuff. Um, awesome, that's what I love to hear. That's what I love to hear. Simplify, just, just create. I wanna get you guys in a position to just create, right? So with that in mind, let's go back into Canva. Um, so here is the two window version that we were kind of looking at before. Um, I have the other window versions here and the same process applies, right? You just pick a background, pick different shapes, throw them in the background, do different stuff like that. Um, and as you see here, that's labeled free, right? So I can go here, pick that and it just pops back there. Now, so when you mouse over the different things, they'll say free or pro and just pick the free stuff, right? Um, instant overlay, just that quick. As long as you have your windows in the right spot, and as I said, I'm gonna, you, you lock them down. You can put whatever you want in the background, go into Photo P, delete the windows, you have a layout. Now I must let you know that I am gonna work on a full complement of all the standard layouts 
that are available in Restream, and I'll make them available to you all later. I still have some work to do on those. But I just want to kind of show you this on the frame overlay day to show you what's possible, right? But I'm going to make these actually as uh, Canva templates. And if you all are interested in them, let me know, because I want to do them all the way up to the 10 window format, which maxes out how many guests and share screens you can have in Restream. So I plan on doing the full layout of all the possible window layouts. So it's going to be a little while, but that's my plan. Um, but as you see here, I already have the three window layout kind of knocked out, but I, I want to work on more of these to kind of let you guys have access to them. So when that gets ready, I'll let you all know. And I might even tell you in one of the lives, but that being said, let's jump into a whole new slide here. And a lot of times we talk about frame overlays and different stuff like that. Um, so yeah, let me answer this question real quick. Yes. Keynote. The desktop application is for Mac only. There is a iCloud version of Keynote that's available for PC, but it doesn't have all of the um, export options that you would get from the desktop version for Mac. It's almost a little bit kind of Canva-esque, right? The free version, because you can only really export as JPEGs and things like that. So I may even do um, some keynote tutorials knowing that maybe a lot of you all may be PC people, the iCloud version, um, because I'm a Mac person and um, that's why I mostly teach keynote. But I added Canva so everybody could uh, take into the joy of <laughs> Bradley teachers, I guess, right? So yeah, so here we are in Canva. And I'm just going to make the background black so I can just, uh, for now, let me see, go here, make the background black so we can see it real quick, see on top of it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to do a um, sidebar, right? Because a lot of people miss out on the opportunity of actually adding more content to their design because they don't use a sidebar. I'm going to go back here to my... You know what it is, is, the secret weapon graphic. And I know that I actually even have a grid. Let me show you this real quick. Let me go to, is it under pieces? I don't know where I put it. Pieces, nope. Let's go back to folders. Maybe it's under restream. Nah, okay, I don't know where it is. But I had some grids that, uh, and actually the grid design and a some sample um, secret weapon graphics I made and I made available for you to go download for free. And let me go, let me go grab that link and I'll put it in the comments also. All right, uh, so here we are here. This is my, my secret weapon graphic and I'm gonna make a sidebar over here. So I'm gonna go to elements, uh, let's go to, delete that so we can go back to generic stuff. There it is there. I'm gonna put a sidebar over here, kind of like that. Then let's add some text. You know what? Since I have my emoji head, let's just throw that in over there. And let's add an effect to that. Blow. White, no blur, kick up the line some. All right. Okay, so here we go. So here's my emoji head. And I'm going to say, just add some text that says, today we're going to learn about, right? Right, so you just make your text over here, do the different layout. And bold that. Then you can have your bullet points, right? So this is a sidebar kind of graphic. Now, this is kind of a pro feature I'm gonna show you. So I'm gonna do one thing that's kind of pro only. You gotta have pro to do this. So I'm gonna change the transparency of this. 
and delete my background graphic. So I changed the transparency. So this is something that I couldn't do in the free version. The ball would have to be solid because I have to go delete, you know, the rest of the stuff I don't want. Right. But because I'm using a pro version and like I said, I, I don't want to do things that you can do in the free version. But I wanted to just show you this as an option if you ever decide to get pro. Right. So I actually have a a little bit of a transparency on this bar. So I'm going to go here and go to download. I'm going to do it as a PNG. With transparency. And I'm going to only export page eight. So done. Download. Because even though you're using overlays, this is what you have to remember. Even though you're using overlays, you always have to remember that you can make any kind of graphic overlay you want as long as you have the parts of your screen transparent that you want to have stuff showing through, right? So if I go down here to my, go back to graphics, upload my overlay, and I'm going to upload my sidebar. Make sure that's the sidebar it is. Open that. Right, so I turn my sidebar on, and as you see here, there's some transparency in it, right? And so as long as you think about what you're doing as it relates to the full screen, you can put graphics and do all kinds of cool stuff, but think about what's going to have a graphic on it and what's going to be transparent for your video to show through, right? And so here's just another thing you can do as an overlay. Don't always think of your overlays having to be a frame or something with a hole cut out of it. That's simple, right? You can do sidebars <laughs> that have content in them, especially if you have a lot of bullet points. Hey, today we're going to learn about these five things. Turn on your sidebar with the five points in it, right? So, and I knew how it was going to look because I had my secret weapon graphic, right? So all those things are options, right? Uh, let's see. Yes, for sure. You can always upload um, custom overlays that have transparency, like what like what you just saw, right? Um, that's a sidebar graphic that I did. Uh, let's see. Yeah, the the sidebar is a forgotten option, right? A lot of people, especially if you are doing a lot of kind of lecture type things, that is an instant screen share. A screen capture, right? So you're saying today we're going to talk about these five things. It 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 eliminates the uh, the need for people to have to take notes. They just screen capture, right, and go back and look at that portion later, or the five things that you were talking about that day, right? So these are all kind of options uh, for that. Um, yeah, the the overlays that I just showed you in Canva are not available yet for you to have. Um, but I do have other things that are available like that, but those aren't ready yet. So, but when they do get ready, I will let you guys know right here in Bradley teaches the live stream. So, all right. Um, oh, <laughs> appreciate it, Ian. Good to see you, man. Appreciate it. Good to see you. Yes, Justine. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it's the forgotten kind of graphic, right? And, um, so yeah, you always want to just think about that. Think about your full screen, but when you create the graphics, think about the areas of transparency you want to have around the screen to place your items in, right? So with that being said, as an option, right? Because my logo, for instance, that's the Bradley Teachers watermark. The default position for it is where you see it. But if I did an overlay and I decided to put that graphic on the opposite side, I could do that, right? It's a full screen graphic, but just most of it's transparent. So you can put things wherever you want them. Um, so those are just options for that. So let me look for the link real quick for the, um, the free... my free uh, grid and 
Let's see. Trying to find the exact product because I, I could give you the link to my store, but I don't want to make it seem like I'm trying to sell you something. But they're they're free on my store. Um, where is that at? Where did you go? There we go. All right. Oh, let's go back. Okay, so here is the link. Okay, where'd the link go? Huh? There we go. All right, so here is the link to go straight to to download the grids and the um, secret weapon graphic. It's a free download. Um, you don't have to pay anything for it. And I can actually show you what they look like real quick. Let's see real quick here. All right, let's go here. Ah, I'll come back to that later. Okay, yeah, so you have um, the grids there that you can use for your layouts. And I think I included like a secret weapon graphic. So that's a grid that you can bring into Canva and put on top of your slide, because I'm using 1920 by 1080, and it has a grid that you can use. And actually, I guess I could download it and show it to you, but yeah, but it's basically a grid layout where you can use it and put it over your video to, to use, I think that's where it is. Yeah, that's one. Okay, let's do this. All right, so I'll add the grid here and show you what it looks like. So here's one of the grids. It is real basic, nothing special. So go here. Right. So as you see here, this is a bl the black one. So these are just grids you can use for in Canva, right? You put it in Canva, even put it out on top of your secret weapon graphic. And now you have grids to help you with your layouts, right? So if you want something in the lower third, that's the lower third <laughs> where the grid is, right? The upper third, that's where that grid is. When you're making sidebars, you don't want them to come. You want it to be kind of a two third, one third design. As you see here, I'm in the middle one third. And also, as you see, my eyeballs are pretty much on that grid line, which is how you want to be in your camera shots. So, yes, you can even use this for when you're setting up yourself in a shot to help you do things better. Right. So but this, that's a free resource. Go there, download it. You can use that link for that. And let's see what you guys are saying in chat real quick. Uh-oh, no sound. So can you guys hear me now? Let me know if you can hear me. Can you hear me now? Just let me know if you can hear me, because that's not good if you can't hear me. Uh, it looks like it says I have sound here, so maybe it's something that just kind of bugged out for a second. But please let me know if you can't. Okay, you can hear me. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right. Because someone said no sound, so I wasn't sure what's going on. All right, cool. All right, so uh, hopefully that was helpful. <laughs> it's okay. That's okay. Cool. All right, so um, it is all good. Not a problem. I do that myself. Um, yeah, so if you all have any questions, we're kind of rounding that last corner now. we got about 10 minutes left. So if you have any questions, anything you would like me to show you real quick, I am here to do that for you guys. That's what this is all about. I'm going to save my other little thing for next week because I want to talk about 
doing lower thirds and um, name bars and stuff like that. There's some cool stuff you can do in Canva that's not always just, you know, um, yes, you can do some things which you put your picture in, stuff like that. But I'm going to show you guys different techniques to make those lower third um, name bars and things of that nature. Well, you can do different. You know what? I'm just going to show you now. Y'all want to see some of those things now? I'll show you a few of them now. I'm not even going to wait for you to say yes. I'm just going to show you anyway. <laughs> All right. So let me go back over here to my home screen. And where is that stuff at? Uh, okay, here's a few of them that I did. Now, these are all in Canva, completely editable, right? And I'm going to make these available to y'all too. These are like little templates. Um, so just like little things that little lower third designs, right? And so if I went here and I put in, now I don't think I have a a blank secret weapon graphic. I think all my secret weapon graphics have text already on them. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Got this one. So I go here. Right. And position it to the back. Right. So that's a lower third graphic that you can bring on screen in a static format through Restream. And now you have a lower third with your name in it and your title in it and even your web address, right? So that's how that secret weapon graphic comes into play so well, because now I can go in here, change my colors, change my text to make sure it fits when I bring it into my studio, um, Restream Studio, right? So I just did some different layouts like that. I actually have about 15 or 20 of them that I did. I'll show you the rest of them next week. Um, but these are just kind of a little different um, lower third name and title layouts, right? So all these things are, are available, right? So that's just kind of a way to make those work. But this is kind of how you can use Canva to do really good video graphics simply and easily, right? And let me turn this off because I actually sent that link to some people. I'm sure they don't want my face on all of those. All right. So but these are things I'm going to show you more about these next week. Um, but today I just want to kind of do the kind of basic overlay stuff. But I can never help myself. I always want to show people extra stuff. I can't help it. All right. Uh, let's see. Yeah, short recap. I'm trying to figure out kind of a short recap of just the different stuff I did today. I can do that. So let's see. Um, window overlays, right? So let's go back to home screen, restream layouts, right? So here's and I'll and I'll be I'll have these available to you at some point, um, but basically. If you set up a 1920 by 1080 layout, right, and you know where the windows are for Restream Studio, which I, as you see at the bottom of the screen, I have a lot of those layouts now, but I plan on doing a lot more. You draw your windows and you lock them. So then that way, whatever you do, you don't accidentally move the windows. So at that point, you can just start throwing stuff in the background behind them, right? And all of these are now overlays, right? Because I'm going to open this up in photo P and delete the gray part. So even here, okay, that's kind of cool, but let's say, I think it's under filter. I was under effects. Uh, yeah, don't really want that effect. Blur. There we go. So say I want it a little bit blurry, right? So I do all that stuff, and now I have. Okay, so now that's the kind of background I want. I didn't want a really high intense texture, so I go here now to download, and I'm going to download this as a PNG through the other app. But from here, it's going to be a JPEG because I need to make transparency later. Transparency is not available 
and what I want to do with it, right? Kick it up to 100%. I'm only going to do the first page. That's all I need. Done. Download. And so now I'd open this up in Photo P as we did earlier. I'd use a magic wand to select the gray, delete the gray, then resave it as a PNG, bring it to Restream Studio. I have an overlay, right? So that's the quick and dirty way to do that. Um, to make the sidebar, what you have to remember is this whole rectangle is my video screen. But in this case, this dark gray or black part will be transparent. This will be showing on my screen, right? So I'm doing this with the idea of this will be transparent. This will be my real graphic. And if you think about it that way, you can always kind of design around yourself, right? Use your secret weapon graphic, throw it in there and design around it. So now as I did the pro feature is I made a little transparency on this so I could see myself through it. But if you don't have the pro version, that's all well and good. Don't worry about having transparency. Just export this as a JPEG with full transparency, no big deal. Delete the dark gray part on the side and bring it in full transparency into Restream Studio. It's still a nice sidebar. You don't have to be able to see through it for it to be a nice sidebar, right? And there's no reason to pay for Canva just to have a little bit of transparency in your sidebar. Now, if you want extra graphics, you want to be able to export as a PNG natively, stuff like that. Yes, go ahead and pay for it. But otherwise, you know, just do your things in full transparency or full opacity, really, and just export them and delete the parts you don't want. So those are always options. Um, yeah. So hopefully that was a quick enough run through in a general sense of those kind of things. Um, Yeah, I mean, everything that I've shown you so far can be done in the free version of Canva, except for that one little thing that I did when I put transparency on the sidebar and then I exported that as a PNG and it had transparency where you could see some video through it, which was, or not was, but which is this graphic, right? You can see me through it, right? I can't do that with the free version. With the free version, this bar would have to be a solid bar, exported as a JPEG, and then I'd open that up in Photo P, select the part you see me on right now, and delete it. So I so the sidebar would be solid, and but it'd have a hole over here to see me through it. So that's the only thing that I've done this entire time that was not. Uh, available in the free version of Canva. Everything else I've done has been available in the free version of Canva. Uh, cool, cool, cool. All right, y'all, we are rounding the last corner for real, for real. So we're about three minutes away and cool, cool. Yeah, we're about three minutes away. So it's time for me to start saying my goodbyes. Hey, y'all, just keep creating, jump into Canva do some cool stuff. I'm going to make some things available for you all as we kind of go through this process. And I'm doing these uh, live tutorials with you all. Please, please, please uh, jump in and go check out the form. Go get the form, uh, go to the form, submit your questions. So it's guaranteed that I'll answer your question. Um, those that are in the form are first in the queue. But as, I, as you saw today, I love answering questions live also. The form is just a way to get your, to make sure that your question gets addressed and you're higher up in the queue of me answering them. You don't have to do that though, it's all good. Also, those of you that are not watching this on my YouTube channel, drop by my YouTube channel where you will find tutorials on creating graphics for Restream and just tutorials for creating graphics in a general sense, even YouTube thumbnails, where I show you with uh, Keynote and now starting with uh, Canva to make those kind of graphics to enhance your video. So drop by those two places. Here's the form again, and make sure you guys do that. Thank you all for dropping by. Again, I am Bradley Vincent of Bradley Teaches. 
Be good to yourselves. Be good to one another. I will see you all next week. Be blessed. Be free, y'all. Bye-bye.